Don't get on another elevator until you've watched this video. We all know that the first rule of elevator etiquette is that you have to wait for everybody to get off the elevator before you try to get on. It doesn't no one work that way, does it? Sometimes the door opens and I wait, just like I'm supposed to. I'm waiting. And then I go to get on. Whoa, wait, where did these people come from? They, they were like somehow hidden people that just seemed to materialize and now I look like an idiot. I know the rules. Okay, we've all been in this situation. You're outside the elevator, you're waiting for the elevator. We all know that this guy got here first. In a perfect and just world, when that elevator door opens, he should be the first one in. But that's not what happens. That elevator door opens, cattle car starts pouring into this thing. This sad sack can't get himself on. By all rights, he should be on, they should be off, and that doesn't happen. What does happen? Poor bastard. He's gonna wind up on the stairs. Listen, buddy, it's okay. You shouldn't have to assert yourself for the rest of us to do what we know is right. In a perfect world, you'd be on, you'd be on the second floor by now. Instead, you're up here with me. Sad sack. And what about that situation where you're in an elevator that's clearly full, and there's always one extra person that thinks that there's room for them, and they just squeeze themselves in there, like, oh my, oh my goodness. And you know what's even worse than? A little crowded in here. Is it? We hadn't noticed. You know what's even worse than that is when they the last person comes in and, and they don't even face forward. They sit there and they and they face us like they're conducting us and we're the orchestra. This is awkward. Never stand the wrong way in an elevator. It's wrong. You face the door. That's the rule. Turn around this way. That's where we're all leaving. Did you ever get into an elevator and it it just smells horrible? And of course, somebody else gets on the elevator and 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 they're going to assume that that was me. It's my worst fears. I always feel compelled to explain it away as. Doesn't it smells horrible in here, right? I it was I that smell was here when I got here. It's just terrible. Oh, it's horror. Yeah. They never they never believe you. We've all had that experience of being on an elevator where somebody gets off on a floor very confidently that it's theirs, only to realize it's not, and then they have to back back into the elevator. That's a shameful moment, isn't it? I and mean, we all kind of sit in judgment. We think, well, you know, maybe if you weren't on your phone, maybe you would have known it wasn't your floor. Every so often, the elevator just shakes and jerks unexpectedly. You start looking around at each other like, the hell was that? That wasn't good. And for that moment, I think to myself, these are the people I'm going to die with. Here's a little etiquette elevator question for you. What do you do in a situation where the elevator's already pretty full and you got a couple of friends or coworkers coming on and they're like in the middle of like a, a, an actual conversation? Should they pause their conversation or are they now putting on basically a mini stage play for the rest of us in the elevator? Do we stop our conversations? Do we give them our undivided attention? Do we jump in? Are we allowed in the conversation? Do we ignore them? That's too much pressure on us. Here's what you should do. If you're in the middle of a conversation, just hit the pause button. Come on, take a break, stand like everybody else, and when you get off the elevator, unpause it, you continue your conversation. Agreed? We've all been in this situation where somebody's on the elevator and they're just chatting right away on their cell phone. Okay, that should never happen. Let me show you what should happen. You get on, you should say, you know, I'm getting in an elevator, I'll call you back in a couple minutes, click. Right, next best option. You get on, and you go into what I call listening mode, and watch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and then I get off. You see what I did there? I didn't speak, I listened. If you have to be in your phone, I think you owe it to everybody else in the elevator to give them a little explanation as to why. Something like, I'm sorry, guys, I, I normally wouldn't be on. It's my daughter's school. It's very important. See, now, I love to be the first one on the elevator. When you're the first one, you get to stand right in front of the buttons. That makes me the captain of this elevator. And I take my responsibilities as captain very seriously. This way, as people start to get on the elevator, I'll say, what floor can I get you? Three. Three? Two, please. Four, please. See, now I'm gonna take care of everybody. Very smooth, very, very pleasant. See, now, now every so often, a, a guy comes in and, and, and steals the captain's spot, but he doesn't assume the responsibilities. He took the spot, but he's doing nothing. And look what happens here. Now everybody has to reach in and find their button. Why isn't he doing anything? Folks, if you're not gonna assume the responsibilities, please don't take the captain's spot, because what's gonna happen is then we're gonna get to another floor and a couple people are gonna get out, and every so often, a door has an unnatural elevator rhythm. The captain is supposed to maintain the elevator rhythm. So all of a sudden, it's open, and we're like, is somebody gonna hit the door close? That's your job. Hit the door close. You see? That's what a good captain will do. Rhythm, the rhythm. Okay, now one of the 
important responsibility as a captain has is we have to decide how long we're going to hold the elevator for if there's people still coming toward the elevator. First rule of thumb is this. If somebody's out there and they call for the elevator, hold the elevator. You hold the elevator. I got you. I got you. Welcome aboard. See, and then you go ahead and do it. See, if they ask for it, you got to respect that. That's the world we want to live in. Now, sometimes a person won't call out for the elevator, but if you listen closely, you can hear the acceleration of footsteps. And when you do, you got to hold that elevator. See? Thank you so much. Not a problem at all. My pleasure. I heard you kind of running toward there. See, you got to reward that kind of effort. Now, if I don't hear anybody calling for the elevator and I don't hear any quickening footsteps, I'm going to hit the door close button and we're going to be on our way. But you see, once in a while, Ugh. And that just creates a very, very awkward situation. I, 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 I tried. I did. I went. I hit the door open. It didn't. It. I think I might have hit the wrong one. I didn't try. I, I didn't want him on here. You know, sometimes you're on an elevator that doesn't have just one control panel. It has two. And when that happens, you have competing captains. Game on. And a situation may come up like this. Young woman gets on the elevator. Three, please. You see that? Both captains, they want to be the guy. They want to get to that three. And if you get to it first, stand there. I've got you all taken care of. No worries. You're in good hands. Sometimes you reach for it. And right before you get there, it's already illuminated. And that's when you know you've tasted defeat. You can brush it off, or you can stew on it. I tend to stew on it. And he gets the girl. Sometimes it gets to my floor, and I've got to relinquish my responsibilities as captain. It's like a dealer at a table. Sorry, folks. You're on your own. Thanks for watching Ed vs. Elevators. Oh. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Oh, and, and don't forget to hit the little bell to get alerts. And don't forget to watch my other videos. Oh, and the most important thing of all,